What is going on, Jackson? Better late than never. We're going to jump in here for about 15 or 20 minutes tonight. Keep it short. Respect y'all's time. Crystal tried to kill me tonight in the kitchen. So full. So full. If I eat another bite, I might die. For real. I'm sure these videos just disappear. There we go. Hello, hello, hello. Give me one second here. And I'm going to jump straight in. We ain't doing a whole lot of sharing. I can always go back and share it after it. How's everybody doing tonight? Made it through another day living in, living in Jackson, I hope. Per usual, another crazy day in the world. Not a, not a whole lot of crazy stuff in Jackson necessarily, at least not by Jackson standards. So, look, I just want to remind everybody, tomorrow at noon, downtown at the in the the yard there in the lawn of city hall the cypher voice napoleon edwards and his his camp are having a stop the violence rally uh get by there if you can let your voices be heard if i can sneak away at lunch for a minute i'm gonna be down there too broadcasting live fingers crossed we'll see how it works out and it, it's a good thing you gotta you, you got to get out when you can. You got to let your voice be heard. You got to let them know that enough is enough. So we cut the show a little short last night. Tornado warnings were coming through. Said, okay, that's the sirens. We better, uh, we better see what's going on here. All right, so somebody's saying that they're reporting a body laying on Gallison Street. I, I don't have any confirmed reports on that, but we'll look into it. Thank you for the heads up. So they, they found a body yesterday, and I don't know if this is the same one that they found in the house there on Officer Thomas Catching Senior Drive, but they found a, a rather decomposed body with gunshot wounds in a house there were some rumors early on that it may or may not have a head, and it may not be the same one. It is hard to get good information concerning any of this stuff, but we are at 91 or 92 murders now. There was a 17-year-old who was shot earlier in the week on the same road, Officer Thomas Catching Sr. Drive. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is Officer Thomas Catching Sr. was a JPD officer who was killed on the line of duty either being carjacked or trying to prevent a carjacking and shame on me. I did not do my fact checking on that before I went on. I will Google it now. It was a great thing about having the worldwide web right in front of you here. She said, uh, JPD is on the scene right now. Yep. So okay. apparently JPD is on the scene on Gallatin. on Gallatin there. So, okay. We'll keep you posted on that. Yeah, so maybe you Google Thomas Catchings. All right, so it looks like uh, I remember I remember Patrolman Catchings, uh, Thomas Catchings. Now I, I recognize his face. Google him here. Badge number eight eighty eight, shot and killed. Tour duty nine years. He was only forty one years old. Uh, Thomas Catchings was returning home following a motorcycle training course when he was flagged down by a citizen who had just been carjacked at the intersection of Robinson Road and Pecan Park Circle. The officer was not wearing a vest at the time, spotted the vehicle, and called for backup. The vehicle sped away as he attempted to pull it over. After a short pursuit, the driver crashed the vehicle into the ditch. As the 18-year-old driver crawled out of the vehicle, he immediately opened fire, striking patrolman catchings in the upper body. Despite being wounded, Patrolman Catchings returned fire, killing the suspect. You know, I remember that now. Mm -hmm. I do. It was uh, the same age as it was March seventeenth, two thousand five. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I remember that, man. You know, it, it's a shame when we we name these streets after people and that kind of violence is happening on them. 
and uh, I believe somebody said it was down there close to the police academy. So they said he left behind a wife and three children. They say he left behind a wife and three children. So man, that, that that's terrible. We hate that. I guess being a senior, he would have had to have a kid. So, um, <laughs> well, uh, the, uh, so it's a damn war zone in Jackson. They have no respect for who or what they kill, where they kill. Um, it just just nobody cares. No respect for life at all. And and I know that it's so popular to say, and I get people I respect to tell me this. They're like, well, Clay, you know, it's a lot of people who know each other, friend, you know, friends and family and acquaintances, domestic, you know, domestic. Dom, dom, domestic. And as you know, domestic does not just mean husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. It means anybody you know in your circle. Like domestic terrorism, and it means it happens at home, the homeland, whatever. I don't feel like I shouldn't have to describe to y'all what domestic is. I feel like y'all know, I hope. <laughs> uh, with that said, I get a lot of people who tell me that, you know, and I always just reckon back to, I'm like, well, 90 some odd percent of your car accidents happen within what, two, three miles of your home? Well, of course they do. You, you pass by those places more than anywhere else, to and from home. Well, you get lax, but you also, anytime you do something in one place more than the other, the chance of getting hurt in that place is higher. Oh, yeah. It's the same thing of being around people more. You're most likely to have an incident with the people you're around more. I mean, just prob- the odds and probability are going to go into that. I, I'm sure there's some numbers out there to back all this up. But it, it all starts back with home training. It all starts back with simple um, crimes not being punished, misdemeanors, you know, no penalties, no consequences and reper- well, there's, there's consequences, but no repercussions. Um, and so you get away with one crime. I, I talk about it all the time. There's gateway drugs and there's gateway crimes, you know, and I know everybody's all pro weed and stuff. And, you know, it doesn't, have, I, I don't have no problem with it, but it is a gateway drug. And I don't care what you say. It loosens your inhibitions and you're willing to try other stuff and other stuff and other stuff. If I break in a car, steal a radio and I get away with it. I'm like, Hey, well, maybe I'll just steal the car next time. Steal the car next time. Hey, maybe I'll steal another car and start a uh, a car a carjacking. Maybe I'll carjack somebody this time. Maybe I'll kill him and carjack him next time. Maybe I'll murder this guy. Maybe I'll sell drugs. And you know, you just it rolls downhill. Do you think if it was um, legal though, it would still be a gateway drug? If, kind of like cigarettes. Like I mean, there's if, tons of people that smoke that have never done. Yeah, but cigarettes don't get you high. You know, I mean, marijuana gets you high. Crystal asked if I thought marijuana would be a gateway drug if, if it was still legal. If it was legal. Yeah, that's what I said, if it was legal. Mm-hmm. And I, I still think, yeah, I mean, because it just loosens your inhibitions, you know. It's just like alcohol. You make bad, it's legal, and you make bad decisions when you get drunk. You know, I mean, I, marijuana's not going to be any different. You know, so, but to, to each their own. I mean, I, I'm not against alcohol. I'm not against marijuana. But I am just saying, <laughs> let me say, we're not against rap. We're not against rappers. But we are against those thugs. <laughs> Little Bone Thugs and Harmony reference there. Um. So, yeah, you know, just uh, to, to each their own. But I'm just saying, it's all gateway stuff. And if we had, if we were enforcing the the, the small laws the petty crimes, the misdemeanors, and they were punishment for that. We had, we had a jail. We were showing, you know, not just catch and release. Mm -hmm. Maybe people would think twice about committing the next crime because they would be like, Oh man, you know what? I spent a night or two in jail last time. Screw that. I don't want to do that again. I'm out guys. I'm going to sit this one out. I've literally had that conversation in my head. You know, you get, you you get arrested for, you know, fighting or breaking in a car, doing anything stupid. And, you know, as you get a little older, you're like, eh, I mean, I, I'm out, dog. I'm out. I'm, I'm going to sit this one out. You know, I mean, I don't hide any of my past. It's all available in, pu- in public records. Um, I'm not a convicted felon. Let me get that out. Let me clear that rumor up. Uh, my stalker was telling people that a couple weeks ago. I've passed several background checks to get an ABC license, and we're going to talk about them in a minute. I've passed several FBI background checks to get um, guns. And I vote, and I can vote, so legally, <laughs> LeBron James didn't pay in for me to to vote as a felon. Google that if you're not sure what I'm talking about, or Bloomberg. So, 
But anyway, with all that said, around 07, I got arrested for about the last time I was going to get arrested. I got, got in a fight downtown at a bar. Spent about three nights in jail because I think they had finally had enough of my shenanigans. And it really, it taught me a lesson. I spent a year on probation, six months on house arrest, made about five, six thousand dollars in fines. That was it. Tapped out. That, that, that was my retirement party. I hadn't so much as gotten a speeding ticket since. Knock on wood. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm just saying, you, you live and you learn. And, that, and that, that's my point. You know, it doesn't, a night in jail ain't always a bad thing. Uh, two nights in jail you know, aren't always a bad thing. It can, it can teach you a, re- a lesson at the right time, but jail shouldn't be a death sentence either. Our jails need to be, I know this sounds crazy, but our jails need to be safe. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't run the risk of dying while you're there for a couple of weeks, a month. I've had a friend, one of my, one of my best friends, Ben Phillips died in, died out in Hines County, uh, diabetic coma. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details here cause I don't have them in front of me, but let's just say this way, the department of justice got involved the family, uh, there was lawsuits, all kind of stuff. Maybe we can get uh, get Ben's dad on here sometime, and you know, if he wants to, and we could talk about it. But so I've had friend, best friend, lifelong best friend, die right here in a jail in Hines County. It's been on the, it made it made national news. Was on the cover of the Clarion Ledger, all kind of stuff. I don't like talking about it a whole lot because it's kind of an open wound, and I don't like the family having to hear me talk about it because they watch the show. So, but you know, I, I wouldn't you rather do um, marijuana over prescription drugs? Well, I don't think you can compare marijuana and prescription drugs. I think they're not necessarily the same thing. Marijuana they're doesn't. Not, marijuana does not help with pain. Not me. I mean, it does help a lot of people. With pain. It it does some people, but I know I'm gonna tell you, patients. cancer patient, absolutely different story. But if if if, if you had just had shoulder surgery, when I had shoulder surgery last year. Marijuana wasn't going to help my. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't fall, I don't fall into the, into the marijuana is good for, good for pain category. Not that kind. Maybe see, maybe the oil and, and all the THC oil and stuff mm-hmm. and some of the medications they have. But as far as just smoking it to get high and it helping with your pain, I, I don't know. I, Maybe I never smoked. Maybe I never smoked weed when I was in pain, so I might not be the right person to ask. Mm-hmm. Let me let me say that before everybody in the comments comes to kill me for for saying marijuana doesn't do something magical. John Stringer says I got a DUI when I was twenty one. Broke me from drinking and driving. Cost me seven thousand dollars. I was twenty one. Hell yeah, man. That's my point. You know, it's it's and I'm sure there's a bunch of comments in here similar to that. So, uh, I. I to backtrack a little bit because we get to going down rabbit holes here we started this off talking about a 17 year old being killed and then it was an 18 year old that shot and killed officer thomas catchings in the midst of a carjacking several years back what did i say 2009 mm-hmm. march 17 2005 so I, thought you said I may have but it was march 17 2005 jackson policeman thomas Jermaine catchings uh, was murdered in, in Jackson. So he has a street named after him. There was two murders on this week. So w- with that said, I bring up the point that if we started enforcing misdemeanor crimes more, jail time, probation, house arrest, a couple nights in jail, as bad as it sucks, will break a lot of bad habits early. You know, I mean, I got thrown in the felony holding cell with killers, <laughs> you know, for fighting in a bar. Yeah, so it, it will, it will break you real quick. Any, any badassery you think you got in you, uh, as a, as a, as a middle-class kid out there running the tough streets, it, it, it'll break you quick. And I'm guessing it'll probably break a bunch of, of, uh, I don't, I don't like the word low class, but po- kids, you know, poverty below the poverty line kids, you know, <laughs> Low class. I don't like calling people low class. I mean, there are people. There are low class people. There's plenty of them. But all right. So um, I feel like I set off some fire bombs there talking about marijuana. <laughs> that is always a hot button topic on here, and I'm willing to discuss it with any of y'all. I'm, I'm not against it. I just uh, I do think it's a a gateway drug if you don't have the mental toughness. You know, I don't think 18 year olds. I think that maybe a certain point, kind of like alcohol, maybe 21. 
You know, then I know there's the argument. Well, if we can go die for your country, you should be able to. You should be able to drink. You should be able to smoke. I get that too. I, I do. Well, and they get them very addictive. And if you don't think there's well, they've changed the smoking the age. Extra. They've changed the smoking age. No, I'm just saying nicotine yeah. is very addictive. I mean, it's not like. I mean. What what about, what's the comparison with cigarettes? I don't think it's addictive. I said it's a gateway drug. Oh. There's a difference. A difference in gateway and addictive. Okay. Gateway drug, in my opinion, is, okay. is, oh, I tried that. It didn't mess me up. I liked the way it felt. What's that? Oh, I'll try that pill. Hey, mm-hmm. that made me feel good. Oh, what's that line do? You know, I'll snort that. Well, I mean, oh, have you tried? Oh, you think you think it feels good when you snort it? Have you tried smoking it? You know, and then it's a, it's a snowball effect. Mm-hmm. You know, you've loosened your inhibitions up at the very beginning, and you worked your way into it. I don't think you smoke weed and then turn around and say, let me try that crack. Well, you know, I've been wild you know. in other ways, but I've, that's never been my thing. I know. So, and yeah, I, I don't think marijuana is addictive. Well, I don't know. I know some people who are quite addicted to marijuana, but they're, it's, a, it's a mental addiction, not a physical mm-hmm. addiction. You can quit, you can sit, quit smoking weed and you, you, you're... You may mess your sleep up for a couple of nights, but your body's not going to be physically addicted. Sean you know, says marijuana is not addictive at all. Yep. But nicotine is very addictive. Yep, yep. I was just that's whose comment I was just referring to there. Uh so that that's just my opinion on it. You know, it's up for debate. Uh, last I, I joked around a couple I'm you know just pointing out that I smoke cigarettes and I've never done marijuana. No, I've done marijuana. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just cigarettes are just cigarettes are cigarettes by design or addictive. It's the point in the cigarette. Right. And I'm saying, why can't we call cigarettes a gateway drug? Well, they are. They are. Cigarettes are a gateway drug, too. I think if you start smoking at a young enough age, you're probably a bad person. I'm kidding. I'm messing with Crystal. I'm kidding. Kidding. But you know, man, you, 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 you see a girl, 16, 17 year old smoking as a guy. As a guy, you probably think, eh, you know what, I'll, I'll, I may try to holler at her. You know, a young teenage boy with only one thing on his mind. You see a girl smoking cigarettes, you know, you, you're probably liable to try to holler at her quicker than you are the girl that's not, you know. Just like girls, just like girls are attracted to bad boys, boys are attracted to bad girls. So, all right, let's, let's get this train back on the tracks here <laughs> before, I catch a be- before I catch a beating. Uh, <laughs> God, I'm gonna y'all are gonna scorch me forever on that one, aren't y'all? So look, the sun and sand. Can y'all see this in, in the video here? This thing right here. This is the original sign out of the Sun and Sand Lounge downtown, out of the Sun and Sand Hotel downtown. It was hanging inside. It says Sun and Sand. And it's got the, it says Sun and Sand Lounge downstairs. I procured that legally. Um, I feel like it's probably worth a lot of money. Especially after the Sun and Sand was named one of the, let me pull the article up here to make sure I'm quoting this properly. Today on WLBT.com, Sun and Sand. The Sun and Sand Motor Hotel is one of America's 11 most endangered historic places for 2020, according to the National Trust for Historic Preservation. One of the most 11 in all of the country, most uh, endangered historic places. I even busted out my special edition, no longer available, but maybe it can be again. Sun and Sand Save Jackson Edition shirt. Uh, let it y'all see it here. <laughs> if you like this, it may be available on our Teespring account. The stickers still are. I think they're three or four bucks a piece. Really good, high quality die cut stickers. So look, the Sun and Sand is sitting back there. 
tons of great stories. I've always been really obsessed with the signage and the history and all the stories about the Mississippi legislature staying there and all the deals that got done in this very lounge. The history. If this sign could talk, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, politicians sleeping with prostitutes and backdoor deals being done and just everything that we know that goes on in those kind of places, you know, I mean, just they, there could be a, that could probably be a, a, like a Netflix style reality, not reality, but a scripted, uh, reality type show about the history of the sun and sand. Like you could probably do like a soap opera there based on the stories. So much history. It probably has vomit on it. Crystal says. So, <laughs> it uh, I just I don't know every, every time. So every time the the sun and sand comes up, it just makes me think. He's like, surely somebody can figure out something to do. I know, at one point, I'm assuming they still do. The Lamar Group owns it. That's who leases the parking spaces to the state at forty dollars per spot. It comes up to about seventy thousand a year, according to WOBT a while back. Um, let's see here. The Sun and Sand has been locked up since 2001. In January 2020, it was declared a Mississippi landmark. The iconic yellow sign has remained put ever since. The group estimates $2.95 million is needed to demolish the Sun and Sand in order to build a parking lot. Do we really want a parking lot there? I mean, we can't do nothing else with that. Uh, so the state of Mississippi purchased... Okay, so the state of Mississippi does own the building now. The state of Mississippi purchased the building in July 2019 with the intent to turn it into parking into a parking lot for state workers. There have been numerous efforts to save the historic motel, which once served as a hot spot for Mississippi legislators and where John Grisham wrote a time to kill. You know, and I didn't, I didn't even know that till I read this article today that, that John Grisham wrote a time to kill there. I mean, I guess just of all the things, you know, and some things, some blatantly obvious things you just miss. Like I, I consider myself sort of, his, of a historian there and completely miss that. Um, so look, the, the sun and sand is there. Hopefully they figure out something to do with it, man. Uh, some condos, you know, some more downtown living. It doesn't have to be a hotel. It could be the sun and sand apartments. You know, kind of like what they did with the Edison Walthall. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would take some creativity and some addition and, and, and stuff like that, but you know, maybe every other hotel room could become, may turn two rooms into one apartment. I don't know. There's throwing shit against the wall there, but something, you know, you never know. Oh, real quick. I forgot to mention our sponsors here. I didn't forget to, I was going to wait a little bit. The gym at Byram. If you're looking for somewhere to work out south of I-20 or anywhere for that matter, if you got a car, it doesn't matter where you live, but especially if you're out in Byram, South Jackson, Crystal Springs, Raymond, if you're looking for a real gym for real results, hit up the gym at Byram. It is $55 a month for a single membership, $85 for a family membership. They have waived the joining fee for the rest of this month. So hit them up, the gym at Byram.com, or give them a call today at 372-2229, or just show up <laughs> during normal hours, and they will give you a tour of the place. You can take a virtual tour online at the gym at Byram. Do they, com. Have, do they, have beds they do. They have tanning beds, swimming pool, indoor basketball courts, real deal Olympic weights, uh, treadmills, uh, ellipticals, a cross training area, Everything. saunas, jacuzzis, lo- a real deal men's and women's locker rooms. They have a unisex bathroom in the middle of all of them. Uh, handicap accessible. You name it, it's got it all. It's got a private women's workout area. It's like a, it's got a private women's gym within the gym, wow. you know, like behind closed doors. So if you're a female, and you, you know maybe you're uncomfortable working out around people, or you know you're new to the workout game and you just don't want people, you, you know, know being weird. You. Yeah, I mean that's how I feel when I go. I don't want a bunch of women looking at me. <laughs> 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 but. You know, look, it's the it's the real deal, Jim. This is not this is not some gym in a strip mall. But I have to share you with the world. <laughs> yeah, so it's a nice gym. Go check them out. <laughs> Even when I move away from here, I'm still gonna work out there. 
if you need your your yard cut, manicured, taken care of, give Danny White and his team a call. Father and a son, Southern Lawn Care, locally owned, locally operated. Uh, they service Clinton, Byron, Florence, Pearl, Brandon, Terry, Richland, this whole area. 601-301-3210. Again, 601-301-3210. Danny is here in the comments tonight. I've already seen him comment. Uh, hit him up. Tell him Save Jackson. Clay Crystal sent you. And see what he can work out for you. That's Father and a Son Southern Lawn Care. Locally owned and operated right here in South Jackson for well, it hadn't been locally owned and operated for 43 years, but Danny is a 43-year resident of Jackson and went to Forest Hill and still lives here in South Jackson. So uh, support one of our own. You cannot go wrong supporting local. It goes right back into the into the local economy. All right, so moving forward, we discussed the sun and sand. We discussed the bodies being found on Officer Thomas Catching Senior Drive. Mm-hmm. So let's discuss this. We had a major announcement last night. If you were watching the show, Crystal and I will be will be doing a radio show now. Uh, every Saturday morning from 11 to noon, starting October 3rd, on one of the most popular conservative talk stations in the state, WYAB 103.9. If you're a fan of uh, the Kim Wade show, for instance, Kim is already on there from four to six daily. So set your preset on your radio. You can, they have a, they have the website. I'll I'll get, I think it's WYABFM.com or WYAB.com. Anyway, I'll get all that together. You can stream it live on the, on your phone, on the radio, on the computer, whatever. So be on the lookout for that. It's going to be great. It's going to be a little different. It will not be a repeat of anything we do here on Facebook. Uh, It will be available after it airs for a podcast and then we will stream it in other places. <clears throat> so check it out. It's going to be great. We plan on interviewing some people as we go, we'll maybe expand to two hours. All kind of options are available there. So I we're going to have may, some fun with it. I may or may not get out of my pajamas. <laughs> yeah, she may or may not get a microphone. <laughs> uh, you know, if you've tried doing any of this, man, using USB mics is uh is very convenient problem that I've learned that nobody tells you is you really can't use two at one time without doing a whole lot of trickery that I have not um, figured out how to do. So that is our reason for Crystal not having a mic. We have it, but I have not learned how to make it all work at the same time. So, all right, moving forward. The Mississippi Alcohol Beverage Commission. WLBT did a really good uh, editor's note or, um, whatever you want to call it, the general manager over there did a video about it, and he makes a good point. He said, like, "Consider this: fix the ABC." It says the Mississippi Alcohol Beverage Commission was founded after the state ended its prohibition in 1966. Not much has changed with the operation in the last 50 years, or in the in the past 50 plus years. In fact, Mississippi is one of only 17 states that are categorized as control states when it comes to the distribution of wine and spirits. The Mississippi ABC structure is inefficient and one location and the one location warehouse is an antiquated model. It has, it has been an issue for years, but the increase in alcohol consumption during the current pandemic only exposed those shortcoming shortcomings on a grander scale to address those issues and look at alternatives. The state legislature created a committee to examine ways to improve the distribution system. The committee met this week and will meet again in November with plans to present options that the state legislature can implement when they are back in session. Different ideas have been tossed around, including leaving the operation as it is today, because that would make sense, moving to a public private structure or privatizing it completely. The last option is how beer distribution is handled in Mississippi. And that seems to work fine. And I'm very familiar with all of this, so I'll get to that at the end of this. As the committee is studying the ABC operation, it needs to take a holistic approach, not focusing solely on distribution. The entire model is dated and needs to be transformed. Grocery stores should be allowed to sell wine, and why, and why, and why are liquor store operators limited on how many stores they can own? That restriction needs to be removed as well. 
<clears throat> like many things in Mississippi that need to be updated to reflect the world of today, the ABC is one of those. Hopefully the commission will offer a proposal that brings us into the 21st century. All right. So when it says at the tail end there of the different options, and it mentions the beer distribution system, which it does work great. Mm -hmm. So the beer distribution system works a lot like, say, Cisco mm -hmm. and U.S. Foods and stuff like that. Each distributor carries X amount of brands that they purchase the right to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, United, not, it used to be United. Now it's Capital City Beverage sells Miller Lite, Coors Light, and a ton of your, uh, not domestic, but your craft beers. Lots of them. A lot of your malt liquors, too. There were Southern Beverage is, for the most part, all Anheuser-Busch, Bud Light, Budweiser, Natural Light, Bush Light. They do sell Corona, which is owned, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Budweiser owns Corona, but it's distributed by Capital City, which has always been a weird deal there. <clears throat> and as Bud or Anheuser buys up more independent craft breweries, their portfolio expands. And I do believe they are allowed to sell non-AB craft beer products. Now, I've been out of the game for about five or six years, so my memory's a little rusty on this. But uh, the 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 distribution model for beer is excellent, and it's, it's how it should be handled, especially to consolidate, but to get it out of the state and to get it out of one warehouse. So that way, you can have a distributor that focused heavy on wines, if so be, if so chose. And that way, they're very specialized, if you just want to get one bottle for a special customer, you could just get one bottle. Right now, I think the state won't order a, a, a certain kind of wine, liquor, or whatever until they can, have to get a whole pallet. So, <clears throat> that, and, and I've never owned a liquor store, but I have had a couple of liquor licenses, and I believe that's the way it was explained to me. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as grocery stores not being able to sell, I don't think... I would never want to hurt the the people who have invested into their liquor stores. Um, you have some great, great liquor stores here, locally owned. I mean, just legendary, legendary places. Briarwood, Nate Dogg and them out there. Uh, plenty others. Stanley's downtown. Uh, they're all, they're all, I feel like it's in the one in the quarter. I've, Joe T's. We, we all have our favorite ones. Uh, I Love America in Byram. The one next to Polk's Drugs in Byram. Great locally family-owned establishments. I would hate to hurt them because they went into that business assuming that Walmart and Kroger and all these other places weren't going to be able to go into that business. Well, I think it's okay for them to sell like wine. Yep. I just don't, I'm not saying it's okay for them to sell. Yeah, and, and they should. Grocery stores should be able to sell wine, yeah. you know, and, and maybe certain things, but I would leave the liquor to liquor stores. And but if a, you know, if a chain liquor store wants to come in or if somebody who, who owns a liquor store wants to open up 10 of them because they've outgrown their walls or the demographics of an area have changed, mm -hmm. then they should be allowed to open without having to move, you know, beer and wine are sort of kind of one and the same. Yeah, I mean, wine is a is a meal mm -hmm. food, you know, drink. Excuse me. So, if you go to get steak, fish, what, whatever, I mean, y'all know how you like your, you know, you know how you like to mix your drinks and and your food. But you know, I like red wine with red meat. Mm -hmm. I like certain beers with 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 fish or red meat or chicken or whatever. I do like to pair my food and my alcohol. Mm -hmm. You know, certain things work better with others. I don't want to drink a beer with a salad. You know, stuff like that. But uh, so you should be able to pick up a bottle of wine mm -hmm. at the grocery store when you're buying your dinner. A lot of people cook with wine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Corey says in California, wine and liquor are sold in grocery stores seven days a week. And they, is, is it not like that in Texas and... I mean, it's um, not liquor. And Louisiana, for that matter. It's not liquor. It's wine. Wine, yeah. Yeah. But in Texas, it's fine. You know, and, I, and I, like I know Costco's got a liquor store on the front of it, and so does Sam's and Madison, but they're not technically in the same building. Mm -hmm. 
they're attached, you know, kind of like a strip mall type concept. They have a separate address and business license and everything. It's a wine is different than liquor. It is. Yeah, wine wine is different than liquor. Beer is different than liquor. You know, so and and then you have the thing in Mississippi. So, yeah, so Jennifer saying not Texas, but yeah, so yeah, in Texas you can get wine and wine in stores, mm-hmm. but you can't get liquor in, in grocery stores. Right. So and then you have the issue in Mississippi where you have all these sporadically dry counties, which they have fixed a lot of that, and you and you'll see here in the next few months, next year, uh, I know Pearl should end up with some liquor stores. I know they just approved liquor on the Rankin side of the reservoir in 047 as far as liquor stores. Mm-hmm. So you, you should start seeing more and more of that pop up. Uh, <clears throat> and you need, look, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm a Southern, I'm a traditional Southern Baptist. But if you can go get liquor at a restaurant on Sunday – you should be able to go by and get it at a at a liquor store. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm also a realist, you know, and people are going to go get it from wherever they want or they're going to stockpile it on Saturday night. Um, Sherry says you can go buy wine in a grocery store anywhere in Alabama and in Louisiana. Yep. Yes, that's correct. That's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. You can't do that here. Nope. And you, you need to be. I just, but I, there's, a, there's that side of me that's very pro small business, and I just, I would want some limitations on it for, as far as, you know, because when we say grocery stores, they're going to try to pass it as, you know, mom and pop grocery stores. And we know, I know. And, we, and, and we know that grocery stores in Mississippi are not mom and pop. They're Walmart and Kroger and, you know, these big chains. Even your small ones are still big chains. I know there's the occasional Max and stuff like that and, independent grocery stores like Allen's out in Brandon. But for the most part, they're all big, big major chains. Yeah. And it would be very convenient to be able to get some wine at it. And you know, you know, a grocery store is not going to want to get into boutique liquors and craft vodkas and, you know, whiskeys and all that stuff. So <clears throat> sell wine and fireball and we'll be good. No, no <laughs> So what do y'all think about that? Should they be able to? Yes, everybody's should, saying they should be able to sell wine and beer. Wine and beer. And should, should liquor stores be able to open on Sunday? Hell, for that matter, should liquor stores should be able to sell lottery tickets? Speaking of that, and I'm kind of joking there. I was as pro-lottery as anybody. And I still am. I'm all for it. But for the love of God, if you're going to sell lottery tickets, you damn well better have a second register open for people who don't want to just put 20 on pump five and have to stand behind somebody getting a pick 50 on the lottery tickets. Sweet Jesus, that is the most annoying thing in the world. You know, I I go to this spot up in Byram all the time and I'm not going to name it because I don't want to sound like I'm talking bad about them because I'm not. But my God, it's a pain in the ass to to go stand behind somebody for five minutes, and then they have the audacity to not scratch their barcodes off <laughs> before they come, before they go up in there to to cash in their lottery tickets. They like, scratch your damn barcodes off at least. Anyway, that's I'm kind of going down a rabbit hole there. I could raise hell about that for a while. Um. Did y'all see, oh, good Lord, our dog over here is going to put herself under the covers and going to sleep. Um, did y'all see where the football mom in Ohio got arrested and tased and skull drugged by the police for not wearing her mask? Now, I know that that is not why she actually got arrested and tased. She got arrested and tased for not complying and obeying and doing what she was told. And, you know, as a conservative who who is quick to say that anytime somebody gets themselves shot by the cops, you, you can't have much gray area there. You got you, you 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 have to pick that side and you have to say, well, I may not agree with what led to that. You, you know, she should have. God, it pains me to say this out loud. She should have complied. If if you went into a football game 
and you knew that you had to wear a mask and you chose to take that mask off you once you got in there. You, you, the you knew the rules. You know the consequences and repercussions. Now, now, uh, sorry, I got a text there. Now, we don't know what the cops said to her. We don't know if they let her walk in without a mask or whatever. And then, yeah, so, but it's ugly. And and it just feels like we're spiraling out of control. Charlotte says she had a mask in her pocket. She had it. Well, she she should. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, she should have put it on if she had it. I mean, if you know, I talk about this all the time. We hate the mask, but we're gonna wear them if I want to go in somewhere, and that's the requirement. Because I'm not gonna put that business in a bind. Now, if the, if I walk in and that business don't say nothing to me, I'm a I'm a slide in and slide out. There's a couple of places I go that, that, you know, they haven't, they haven't said anything to me. So those, I kind of tend to re, repeat, give those businesses repeat business. Um, Jennifer says, if you look, the officer wasn't wearing a mask either. Do you remember? I have to go back and look. I got it pulled up here, but, uh, you can go find the story on outkick and it's probably on. No, the, the officer does have a mask on in the screen grab. I'm seeing now he's not wearing it. Right. It's all pulled down under his nose. But he does, yeah, he does have one on and he may have pulled it down when he walked up into the stands. But the picture I'm seeing is once they've gotten out to the parking lot and he's, he's grabbing her up by hand and about to tase her ass. So I don't know, man. I don't like any of it. I don't like where we're going as a country. It is a uh, police being called over people not wearing a mask is absolutely ridiculous you know but once you get yourself into that situation you know you get yourself out of it by doing what you're told and living to fight another day we're not go to jail while your kids it was an eighth grade high school football game so i'm assuming she wasn't there just for shits and giggles her kid was probably playing football so now mother of the year gets arrested in front of her kids and god and everybody Tased. Yeah. Tased. You know, and then the family, you know, then everybody has to see this. I don't know, it's just a terrible situation. Terrible, terrible situation. Danny says under the nose constitutes a violation of proper equipment use. Yeah. Nobody wears it correctly. It's, it, that's part of why it's so just asinine at this point. It is. It, it's ridiculous. So, football mom gets arrested. That's just terrible. I don't even know what to say about it. But then you have them sitting here, got the TV on in the background, and you have all these rioters. Yeah, all this rioting and looting and and, and protesting over Brianna Taylor and just everything that's going on. I, you know, I, I just don't want to make this show about that. There's so many places you can go get that content from. It didn't happen here. And it's such a hot button topic. We're not going to agree. I'm sitting here watching them unload all this crap out of the U-Haul and destroy your restaurant. I just ain't about that. That's pre-planned nonsense. They were going to do this no matter what the outcome was. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, so Crystal's friend, Amy, made us some really cool coasters. They're actually uh, for like a bar top. They're ceramic tiles. They have different um, Jackson landmarks on them. Here's a candlestick. There's another one up here with Dutch Bar and Funtime Skate Land. Really cool stuff. So, look. Didn't want to keep y'all on here long tonight. I got to jump off here. Get to start wrapping it up for the evening. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Again, be sure to check out the sponsors. The Jim at Byram. Father and a Son. Southern Lawn Care. Hold on. Crystal's got something she wants to say. Man, as far as the fair goes, all the information is available online. It's still on. Uh, they're going to limit how many people are allowed in. 
They're going to limit how many people per acre. You got to wear your mask. They're going to clean the rides between every ride. They're going to do a deep clean twice a day. It's going to be miserable. It's going, yeah. I mean, look, get out and support it because we. It's better than being canceled, but uh, be prepared to be inconvenienced and and bring take your patience with you. You're going to need it. Take your patience with you. But get out and support it, man. It is a lot of a lot of vendors out there who are hurting. I know I I want to say the number was 90% of the state fairs got canceled this year. And this is one of the only ones that's actually going on. Um I could be a little wrong on that number. I did say that I did say where some of the vendors had canceled, but we have 90% of 90% of their vendors according to the Agriculture Commissioner Andy Gibson stayed on. And we're very grateful because they missed so many financial opportunities this year over cancellations. So keep all that in mind. Mm -hmm. And Andy got on there the other day, and that is an interesting, interesting guy. And there's some stuff coming out about him still practicing law while he's agriculture commissioner and actually representing some people who may be suing Mississippi. Don't quote me on that. I need to go back and confirm that story on MississippiToday.org or .com or whatever that website is. Um, Some stuff going on there. But uh, we we do need to support these 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 folks. If, if you don't, if you want to get out and go to the fair, go to the fair. Live your life. If you go to Walmart, go to the damn fair. If that's what you want to do, but take your patience with you. You're probably going to need it. There's some great entertainment this year. Um, I'll see if I can. I'll, I'll pull up the website and share all the stuff in the comments here at some point. And it's on our page, but you got to go back a little ways. But get out and support it. You know, hopefully, uh, oh, I forgot. SEC football starts Saturday. Um, I think the early game is Ole Miss and Florida. Mm-hmm. You know, so Ole Miss just cannot get away from Dan Mullen. It, Florida is a pretty big favorite there. But, hey, look, man, upsets happen. That's why they play the games. Lane Kiffin's first game is Ole Miss coach. Should be fun. Then the, uh, <clears throat> the 230 game is Mississippi State. At LSU, the defending national champions, tons of turnover down there at LSU. About the only person left from the team from last year is Coach O. I mean, lots of turnover. Lots of coaches have left. Lots of players went on and got drafted. I think there's seven – I want to say the number was 17 or 18 starters off of that team got drafted or are no longer on the team this year. So, a lot of turnover down there. Okay, Crystal just took a picture of the coasters and she's going to post them. Yeah, yeah, you'll have to do it when we're done. She'll or we'll post it on the main on, on the main page. She took a picture saying it won't let her post. It. Yep, it won't do that and <laughs> on that feed. So yeah, it just won't let me take pictures. <clears throat> I didn't see nobody ask you for for pictures. I think you're making that up. Oh, the 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 girl that made them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amy, Amy was the one that made them. That's right. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm picking at her. Yeah, um, yeah, there's several if you want to look for them. No, no, no. I believe you. I'm just picking at Crystal. We're going to get the pictures posted. We'll have to do it when we get, when we get off the live. It, it, it won't let you do anything on our end because we're moderators. It won't let us post pictures from our mobile devices into the, into the comment section. And it may not y'all either. I don't know. Anyway, look, thank y'all so much for tuning in tonight. Crystal had to had to nudge me into doing a show. I was like, I just want to work on some old videos and and do some do some stuff I've been procrastinating on. She's like, yeah, you know, you need to do it. I was like, I do, I know. Uh, one last thing, I forgot. For all you defund the police folks, all you anti cop folks, all you police haters, there is one way to be the change you want to see, and that is from the inside. The Mississippi, Highway, the Mississippi Highway Patrol is accepting applications for ne- for their next recruiting class. Be the change. Be the change you want to be. Be the change you want to see. That's what y'all keep. That's what that's what y'all tell me all the time about Jackson. If I don't like what I see, do something about it. Change it. You don't like the police? Do something about it. Join them. If you can't beat them. Join them. Mm-hmm. You can change it from within. You know, be the change you want to be. 
and then get back to me in three years because I want to see what your opinion on that is is in three years. Three years of getting disrespected and beat up and or attempted to be beat up, you know, and and everything that comes along with being a cop. And, you know, I think everybody should. I think every high school senior should have to do a ride along with a cop just to see what they go through. Another conversation for another day. <laughs> Y'all think on that. Of course, that would, that would actually entail making it to being a high school senior. Mm-hmm. The, n- not a small feat in Mississippi. Nobody at this table did it. <laughs> Bye. Good night. <laughs>